Bull House Chapel in the summertime, the sun is breaking through. The colour is gone, the choir's song, the early morning view. The railway line passed here, but that's in days gone by. No more the trains, a crying shame, now walkers they pass by. It happened in the afternoon in 1884, where death descended quickly upon this fabled moor. People came from miles around to view the awful scene, the tragic mess, the lurid press, the early camera gleams. We'd like to take you back there, a train upon a rail, a July day, so if we may, please listen to our tale. Welcome back uh, to one of my films. I'm Dave Cherry, of course, and I'm at the lovely Bullhouse Chapel. We've come to talk about the uh, 1884 railway disaster. Now then, Paniston, this line, what went past here, a very busy line in 1884. 94... What, what, what year was this, Dave? 1884. 1884, right. 94 trains a day through here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What were they transporting? Mainly coal and oh, yeah. passengers, etc. Passengers as well? Yeah, from right. Manchester, London Road, to Sheffield, Victoria and everywhere else. Right. Well, London Road, Dave, is now Manchester Piccadilly then, yes? That's quite correct. Right, the train left Manchester at 12.30 on Wednesday the 16th of July, 1884. It leaves Manchester 12.30 and it comes through the Woodhead Tunnel, it's, on, it's actually four minutes late. Woodhead is that way about four miles. And it gets to here, one twenty-one. So which direction was the train going, Dave? It, it's coming from Manchester, that way. Uh -huh. From Dunford Bridge, back there, and it's a slight incline all the way down to Penniston. Right. So it shuts off steam, and now we're about the, I'd say about 300 yards from the point of impact. Right. Uh, from, the, from the underbridge. The signal box, man, in the signal box is an almighty crack. The axle rod breaks on the locomotive. And he hears this, does he? He hears this loud crack. The locomotive's a D12. Mm -hmm. The axle rod makes it real part. So the carriages go straight over, over the left hand side. Right. And it's utter carnage. Absolutely. All ten, Dave? All ten? All ten, all ten. Was it a sheer drop then, or was it flat land? Yeah, 24 feet drop. The engine driver called Kaywood said, he kept steam on until I passed Dunford Bridge Station, yeah. then I shut steam off. Yeah. That's the usual place for shutting off steam, yeah. mm -hmm. until leaving Penniston. Mm -hmm. I think I was running between 45 and 50 miles an hour when approaching Bullhouse. The first thing was wrong, I heard wrong, was just west of the Bullhouse signal box, I heard something like a crack in the motion. That's when axle rod goes. Right. Which so is what the signalman heard as well. Yeah, yeah. So this, Tony, is where the signal box was where the signal box operator heard the, the mighty crack of the axle rack going. So we're roughly about 100 yards off the vicious right-hand curve. 1990 were killed straight away. They sent the bodies to the Wentworth Arms, you know the Wentworth Arms? Oh yeah, they no, were put in, 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 in Penniston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a, like a carriage works behind and all the bodies were, were all piled in there. There were 60 hurt which went on a train back to Manchester to the uh, Royal Infirmary. What was the capacity of the train? That, uh, 100, 100 passengers were right. on, on the train. 19 gets killed straight away and five dies later. Mm. And this is an incredible thing, absolutely incredible. So it's a quarter of the passengers. Yeah, 25%. Of the yeah, the line's, yeah, yeah. Uh, the line's clear by yeah. half past 12 here. Yeah. So here we are, this is the actual site, Tony, of the actual uh, train crash. Uh, the locomotive comes off the road here, yes, and the carriages go early down there. This down is this a, banking. The old embankment is roughly 100 yards. Right, so the loco comes down here. Because it's quite a curvature. This, this, I just, it's a vicious right-hand curve. Yes. Well, Dave, how did the carriages finish up over the bridge? Well, I've studied this intently. Let's go back to Manchester. The train leaves Manchester at 12.30. We have about seven carriages on. It gets to a place called Godley, which oh, yeah. is roughly 8.6 miles from Manchester, or 24 minutes, in other words, halfway house to here. So what they do at Godley, they extend the train behind the locomotive, they put a Cheshire Lines Committee horse box. Oh yeah. And then a brake van 
and another GNR composite carriage. So at the end of the day, there's a locomotive with a tender, with the horse box, with a brake van, and then we think two first class carriages and eight more second class and third class carriages. So they added to the initial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, now we've got an actual chap who sees it. I'm quoting now from the Manchester Courier and Lancashire General Advertiser on the 19th of July, which is three days after the 16th, after the accident. Right. A fella called Mr. Doodson, he were walking along the road. Walking along the road when the actual train crashes. He was lucky. <laughs> he, he was very <laughs> could've, lucky. Could have copped out. And this is what he says in verbatim. A well-dressed lady was lying dead on the ground. The dead body of a gentleman dressed in a black cloth suit lay a few yards off, the lower part of his body being in a frightful state of mutilation. This is like Victorian English I'm quoting now. Uh, yep. uh, so, right, two well-dressed females who had evidently travelled in one of the first-class carriages. Notice it says one of the first-class. Ah, so, the, so there must be at least two. Obviously two, yeah. Lying on the road. Resting on the head of, of them was a large coping stone which had been displaced from the bridge. So it had dropped off bridge. You know, the accident must have knocked this, this coping, great big stone. And that, and that's the, as well as the accident, accident going, the, it, it, it actually crashed into something as well. It goes on, Mr. Doodson, this is his fellow who sees it, and his companion rolled away the stone and found the lady dreadfully injured, or, or of course dead. So Dave, did the accident happen after the signal box? Oh yes, and we've got a prime witness here, this fella, Henry Baxter, they called him, the signalman on duty that day at Bullhouse, wow. reports at 1.21, he gets the time bang on, 1.21, in verbatim, quote, I watched the train approaching, but noticed nothing unusual, either in the speed or running of the engine or train. In other words, he's looking up the track here, yep. and he sees it coming, until just as the engine was passing my box, I heard a very heavy thud, as though something had been broken. I then noticed the engine begin to oscillate very violently. It continued to oscillate, and when the middle of the train was about halfway between my box and the underbridge, I saw the carriages swaying to the left, and then leave the rails and run down the side of the embankment. In other words, Danny, left, that's the Pennington side, yep. right? All the train went down the bank on the west side of the underbridge, Pennington side, except, I think, the front brake van, which rolled down the east side of the bridge. Wow. And the, so, the, so it finished up on both sides of the track, then some of the debris and everything. So around. the loco with the tender, the horse box, stay on the top of the bank, off, off the rail, of course, but the front brake van goes to the Manchester side, and all the all the carnage is on the left, on the, the on first, the medicine side. First class carriages on the left then went down there. Well, here we are, a lovely interpretation board which really tells the story. It was obviously well covered, you know, and, and beautifully done. Look at that wonderful line drawing there. It's fantastic. You can actually see the colour here, the pitch. Yeah, we haven't seen side. that before, yeah. Yeah, but I like this story, Danny. School children, Mr. Joseph Ensoer, master of the Millhouse Board School. That's bottom here, roughly. Yeah, Millhouse School. Know it? Yeah said the first intimation he had of the accident was a message that the children from the school were all running down the road, well it's up the road. What, towards the uh, disaster? And although yeah. the time for opening the school for the afternoon had arrived, there was not a child in attendance. He went out and on looking towards the line observed, and what at first he took to be a train on fire, and in a few moments the air was clearer. He realised that a train had fallen down the embankment and caused the dust to rise in such quantities as to be mistaken for smoke but don't forget the lot of paraffin lamps on you know before electric. so they could see it from way down there that's, yeah. that's a good full perhaps what 700 800 yards away yeah so he hurried down and found a terrible scene of confusion a large number of children assembled near the scene but this this now da nah, danny we this is a scene of the carnage this west side of the bridge this is where it all happened, all the bodies mangled up wow. on the road. Yeah, well, you see the depth of the fall now, can't you? There's 24 foot. Thousands of people from Barnsley, Sheffield and the surrounding country visited the scene of Wednesday's accident at Bullhouse Bridge. In the afternoon, the spectators were numbered to be thousands. Wow. What rendered the scene most interesting were the operations of a large gang of men engaged in removing the wreck. By evening, all traces of the accident are gone, have been removed. 
Small pieces of wood, glass, scraps of iron and air were lying about in all directions and the people were taking them for, you know, for souvenirs. Mm -hmm. It was really pillaging uh, from people's valuables because there's 100 people on the train, there's a, yes. there's a few valuables going yes. on there. Mm. It was shocking. That's happened. Right. You've now, got a question whether any valid investigation... That's what I'm out. just coming to, to uh, yeah. John. Yeah. I'm, I'm just coming to that because that is very important. Yeah. The Board of Trade Investigation basically were another Victorian whitewash because there was no mention about the axle rod, which of course were metal fatigue, mm. did not been serviced yeah. right. 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 There's no real mm. yeah. 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 All they talked about were the vacuum brakes right. on the locomotive. Six months before, the company, the railway company, had been warned of another accident back down the line at Dinting. What happened there? And the brakes didn't fail to safety. Mm -hmm. well, when the carriages parted from the locomotive, they didn't fail to safety. The brakes didn't come on. Well, the brakes didn't come on. How old was the train, Dave? This is important. The locomotive, the detail, built in 1877, which is right. five, it's seven, five, eight, eight years. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. No, it's eight not, years yeah, before. Yeah. In the MS and LR, that's a company at Gorton, Manchester. Yeah. And it had last been through the works for repairs in November 83. So it's been through the works, it's July, what, six, seven months before? Yes, yeah. yeah. But the Board of Trade inquiry never focused on this broken natural rod. So they kept banging on about this, about these brakes. So literally, the company got away with yeah. it. The company at the time was, which was the MS and L Railway, Manchester, yeah. Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway. Right. As so I said, the, so the report just didn't mention the axle, just mentioned the mention lack of brakes. It just and that's what they decided yeah. was the problem. So, so it was a weak part, wasn't it? Yeah. It took them another three years for them to modify the law cause. Yeah. Yeah. The official yeah. Board of Trade report ran to 20 pages. They concluded that the cheap braking system of the engines should be scrapped as any brake or rupture in the vacuum pipe that connected the carriages will cause the brakes not to work. In other words, they didn't fail to save them. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, just it. On, 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 sorry, just sorry, on, on the previous uh, similar accident, how, how were the fatalities on that as well? I, I didn't get that one, no, John. I didn't no. uh, get it. All I know, it, it, I think a one carriage come off and went down the, yeah. down the viaduct up the Yes, vintage. it did. Yeah, it certainly wasn't it seems, as, as bad as, no, as, as no. Bullard's one. One thing that's right, so there was, yeah. there was no compensation, no insurance or anything for, no, the, for the victims? Yeah. No, that's just it, Danny. It's, it's, it's what's called a cop-out, isn't it? You know? mm. So I think that's it, lads. I think that's enough. So thank you. Yeah. Thank, can't thank you enough for coming. Yeah. Here's Nandis Mia. Yeah. The check will be in the post. Thank you very thank much, you, sir. Well, I do hope you've uh, enjoyed our little film about this 1884 train disaster. So I do hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. So that's a lot from Dave Sherry, and thanks a lot, Danny. My pleasure, Dave. Here's me hand, here's me heart. Is this the commercial you're doing now? Uh, no, no. Right, okay. The check will be in the post. <laughs> that's a lot. Still Thank working you. cheap, you know. <laughs>